Britain has lost hugely. I think that was the moment when the consciousness that was developed after the Second World War, which was collective, which was that we are strong when we're united, we defeat the fascists, we work as a team, we are, we are one people. If that's not police incitement, I don't know what is. And Thatcher's aim was to reduce the power of labour and that was, she consciously entered a class conflict. And after that it was the consciousness, I'm your competitor, I'll do a deal with you, I'll beat you down. We don't, we're not a team, we're, 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 not, we're not a society. There's all communities die. And a decision has got to be made. Do you take redundancy or do you take transfer money and do you move? <laughs> Gather round you people, you women and your men Once more our backs up to the wall, we've been attacked again Which side are you on? Which side are you on? The film was made at a time when, um, say, the, all the media were completely hostile to the miners. You had nothing that put the other side of the argument. Several of us were just desperate to, to intervene in some way because it was a, a massive cultural explosion that ran from far level. I mean, there were, there were creative writing groups, people were exchanging poems, there were songs being written, there were concerts in aid of the miners. They were writing about the police brutality, and um, you'll see in the film. Husbands and children, hold up your head. Walk tall, look all straight in the eye for the tale of your courage through these bitter times will live on and shall never die. To go to the steelworks we usually go straight down. But they've blocked all that off to make us come up here. Can we go on there? Can we go on there? Go on there. Motorway. No, turn, turn right here. He was asking, or stated, the police officer stated, I don't know what you was just picking outside these gates for because you shall never win this dispute. And one of the pickets replied, Oh, we'll win this dispute, look here, and we'll also get rid of your government at the same time. He says, well, if you do get rid of our government, he says, we'll be the next government. The police will be the next government. And I think, you know, that statement, and the way that statement was made, has frightening implications for the working class in this country. You turned your back on Northern Ireland, wishing it would disappear. Said the Irish can't stop fighting, but it'll never happen here. And it disturbed your conscience, so you turned your face away. And let Belfast 1970 become nothing happened today. Not once in living memory has there ever been a time when the paper said a strike was anything other than a crime. But they only pat the heads of those who run their side. So at least when they're attacking us, when oh, all we're getting it right. So let's sing their praises and glorify their deeds For they're fighting for the future and they're giving us a lead and There's no point in complaining, things are moving to the right And then attacking those who are prepared to make a fight We look at our colliery where there's 1100 men employed Once that colliery closes, there's all communities die there's Two trains coming from the railway, British Rail, every day, so they've lost their jobs straight away. With the steel industry, with 300 tonnes of steel goes into our colliery every day to be used. We've also got the ancillary work, such as engineering works in his own vicinity, which will lose out, they'll not have work. So when we attack a mining community, we attack a lot more people besides, and I believe it's time people did realise this. Mr McGregor's not just going to close our collieries, he's going to close a hell of a lot more work down in this country. Well, actually in Wumble, it's in, Tony, uh, it's in Tony Pitt Village, like Cottonwood is, which is only a mile and a half from where I live. And I think people in Yorkshire, what have been through Cottonwood, 
they know that pit starts at one end and schools at other, and it is just a street actually through Cottonwood. And we've heard that school, uh, school is closing as well. And same as gentlemen have said, what good are their homes, what they've bought? Who wants to buy a home in a mining community where there's just no work? And there seems to be no prospect of getting work. Why should we not do then, yeah? Well, this is I'm not industrial gypsies, are we? I don't want to move. No. I was born in Breda. Why should I have to uproot, uproot myself? That man is 72 years of age. My husband's 40. He hopes to work at 65. Mm. And that man's not going to tell him he's got to finish at 40. Well, well, not only that, we've got <coughs> young boys down with us. 25, 26. And this is their fifth pit for them to work in because they've shut them all. The trouble is, as I say, we've, it's the last pit in the round there now. They've got nowhere else to go. I mean, at 25, 26, you can't chuck them on a scrappy. They have closed the Wyndham Western, and the wounds of man bleed in terraced houses, weary with redundancies, births and deaths. And history turning in on itself, and all that that in itself speaks only of slaggy tons searching for flames in lumps of coal. And the village cannot sleep. As coal flames die behind the closed doors of eyes that cannot weep, Tears too are redundant. And I can't remember in the time that I've been in the coal mines when the NUM has fought against the closure of a pit through exhaustion. <clears throat> it's never happened. But a miner working under air conditions knows exactly what's coming, knows exactly the future is pits limited because they've extracted the coal resources that are there. And a decision has got to be made. Do you take redundancy or do you take transfer money and do you move? Or in a position where a pit isn't exhausted, do you stand and fight? And fight for your community, your family, etc. And that's the decision that the miners have taken at this time. We are standing and we are fighting for pits that still have coal in Who am I to ask them why this pit must live, that pit must die? They say, but sir, it's economics. That's juggling by financial comics. What maxim has the NCB, the miners' lot, or LSD. Pitricide means to murder a pit for economic reasons. And there was many a pit, and there was many a pit village murdered in the county of Durham for economic reasons. And here was one of them. Ye brave bold men of caution, the day is drawing near. You'll have to change your language, lads. You'll have to change what cheer. But leave your picks behind you. You'll ne'er need them again. And off you go to Nottingham. Join Robin's merry men. Ye brave bold men of Black, eerie, cold and empty. That's how she'll always be. Cold, bleak and neglected, miles beneath the sea. The silent, still coal faces. Machines no longer in use. The timbers bending with weight. The girders working loose. Maybe the ghosts of men, lost in the bowels of the earth. Through trying to make a future, but now what is it worth? All for the sake of money, it is gone and closed for good, leaving behind the misery, just like they knew it would. But who feels the pain? Certainly not those at the top. It's the ordinary, honest miner whose lives will have to stop. So where is all the money? Has it gone to a foreign land to help to preserve a pyramid from sinking into the sand? Or maybe they fancy another bomb to protect us from a war. They won't need to watch the Russians, for it's here we have the core. A bubbling little time bomb. These men won't take much more. First a gentle ripple, and then a full-scale war. So all you high up nobodies, take heed of what we say. The miners will be united, and they will soon see their day. I think we said that uh, they want the trade union, they want the people in this country just to be cap and hand and turn up for a day. You know, well, you can work because your face fits. That's what I wanted back. I want this cap and hand, hand to mouth. 
and then tempted to say that the girls that we are, but they're not break us because we're all solid. Well, I think the um, amount of money that we've been getting and the amount of children we've got out, it's been a very hard struggle. And people that should realise this is a well family now, they know what a struggle it can be. When you get your family allowance, there's no way that you can go out and buy a joint for children. Uh, you don't have your proper nourishing meals and things like that. You cope with chips and beans, and perhaps on a Sunday you might get a bit of stewing meat instead of your normal roast. And you look round and kids want things, and that's a hurting point. When your children want, and you just haven't got it. On all I do is feed my kids and have my money for me electric. I'm not bothered about paying anybody. They can't have what I haven't got. I mean, I've had a bit of hassle, as you know. Yeah. And uh, they've given me two months to pay whilst they're fetching my furniture. They can fetch my furniture. I've still got a roof over my head. I've still got my kids and I'll still feed them. And that's all there is to it. They understand. I mean, they're not babies. I mean, eldest is 13. And they understand that the dad's doing it for them. I mean, he, I've got three boys and hopefully I'm hoping when, when my kids leave school, they've got a job. Come on, my lasses, we're on our way to the kitchen. Gang along to the curry club just to start to cooking. All the lasses standing there, ready to give you dinner. Gang along to the curry club. We're mad to work in the kitchen. We are open, each kitchen's open differently, but take Easington, we are open five days a week and we provide around 450, 500 meals a day. Um, apart from during the six week school holidays when we provided 900 a day. For the first month, two months, it was hard. It's still hard, but we're on a plateau now. We can exist, we can live. And the lads are talking about it. Well, if it goes on well next year, we'll fight well next year. And you know, this starving miners back to work, thanks to his brothers in the trade union movement, we can survive. Mummy, I need new clothes. How I'm going to get them, heaven knows. 26 weeks without any pay, and now we're living day to day. The freezer, alas, is now quite empty, and in my purse, only £1.20. Out of the window has gone my pride, maternal instinct says provide. Faced with trousers with holes in the leg, I guess I've to learn how to beg. Mummy, are you going to give in? No, my darling, not till we win. I know your faith lies in my hand, and perhaps one day you'll understand why the hardships we have to endure to make your future more secure. There's no dignity in a dull queue. That's not the life I want for you. We are the nameless ones. Bargain basements, tebbits, bikers, painters and hole in the shoe hikers. We are down and outs, scroungers and layabouts, often talked about. Lines on social security graphs, percentages, numbers and points. Means test applicants, redundancies, McGregorized boys. We are statistics, the unemployed, beggars, overman misfits, rejects and lazy buggers, suicides, death grants, yops, Volunteers for social schemes, psychological oddities, benefit books, production outcasts, political pregnancies, supplements, question marks, orphan ejaculations, fourth world candidates, and millions of pound notes paid weekly. But once, a century ago it now seems, we were known as people. I came to write this at a time when I was unemployed and uh, it angered me to see people selling jobs as I'm taking voluntary redundancy. You never thought for fellow man or sons and daughters future plans. You took your master's paltry sum instead of fighting. What happens when the time will come the forums you're writing? Ask your master years from now when things are better. Tell him how. Your sons and daughters need to work. A favour to you. He'll say to you, you had a job, you sell it to me. So look around to years gone past. Your father's fought for work to last. So tell the master where he's deal to go to hell. And tell him that you really feel it's no use to sell. Yeah. 
Will we be able to buy it back again when I want a job, Dad? Ten thousand pounds in exchange for one miner's job forever. Remember, redundancy money is only wages, paid in advance. When that's gone, what's left for you and your children? Dad? Dad? How much do you sell me job for? So get off your knees and stand up and fight like our fathers did before. So get off your knees and stand up and fight like our fathers did before. Now our wives say stand beside us, they're beside us all the way. And we never hear them moaning, though they're struggling without pain. That is why we're gonna win this fight, if we don't just have each day. So get off your knees and stand up and fight, let the workers have their say. Get off your knees and stand up and fight, let the workers have their say. As we're standing on our picket lines, which has always been our right, trying to reason with you comrades, trying to make you see the light. Are you proud to walk on through us, knowing what we do is right? Make up your mind and come stand with us and our victories inside. Then make up your mind and come stand with us and our victories inside. You're walking past the picket lines, behind a wall of blue, who laugh and jeer at your fellow men, all because of you. Hiding behind lame excuses, when money's your only aim, leaving others to fight your battle, but the benefits will be the same. Knowing of Tory deception, on Thatcher's side you stay, calling your leaders and brothers, never thought we'd see the day. McGregor, you're doing a service. Just wait till your usefulness ends. The butcher won't want to know you. Don't think you'll reap dividends. But if you should come among us, don't tell us who you are. Because the wound that you've inflicted leaves an everlasting scar. Oh, Silver Birch. Scabs and coppers, spot the difference. I'm getting paid £350 a week to break this strike. I'm getting paid £350 a week to break this strike. I read the Daily Mail. I read the Daily Mail. I hate trade unions. I hate trade unions. I'll still be working in four years' time. <laughs> Put out the fire. Close the furnace door. No longer the need for smelting ore. Cut back on ships and making steel. Tell the workers there's no appeal. Put out the lights on the factory floor. We don't need factories anymore. Still the power that works the mills. Import all socks and suits and frills. Close down the mines, settle an old score. We have no need for them no more. Sell to those who have the wealth. Privatise the national health. We don't need women or working men. Put them on the dole and then cut to the bone the monies we pay. They have no flaw to make their say. The union's strength slowly neutralise. We'll stipulate the wages rise. And when they raise their heads to roar, make them toe the Tebbit law. Don't worry about the TUC. All deciding votes will favour me. An honours list is by far the way to change where loyalties are. And before realisation of their fate, we'll achieve an authoritarian state. Not Big Brother watching them, but the Iron Mistress from number 10. City.